Uh, Richard says, I am a new newbie and need instruction <laughs> on installing LogMeIn on Ubuntu. I love how there's a random dope in there. Oh, dope. That's what she was stumbling over. <laughs> I'm a new like newbie. Don't. Okay, thank yeah. you. A so, Homer Simpson there. Written like you would say it, yeah. Okay. Um, so looking to install LogMeIn in Ubuntu. Uh, what LogMeIn is, is a web service that allows Windows and Mac users, keywords, Windows and Mac users to uh, basically access their desktops from anywhere, from any desktop. No so way. So it, it's cool service, but completely incompatible with Linux. And as far as... Oh. Uh, as far as they've ever told me, they, they say that development is happening for a Linux version, but they have no ETA. That's, to me, a company's way of saying, yeah, we acknowledge Linux exists, but we don't really care. <laughs> so that's kind <laughs> of the impression that I get with LogMeIn. Yeah. So, uh, so what you want to do instead there, uh, who was that that was asking? It was Richard, right? Uh, Richard, yeah. Richard, what we want to do instead is just use the integrated VNC server in Ubuntu, which is built into the operating system, so you don't really need to uh, go with a third-party service uh, if you don't want to. The way that you would enable that is just go up to your system menu here. Preferences, remote desktop is what they've named it now. So click on that one instead. Forget about XDMCP. Uh, allow other users to view your desktop. Allow other users to control your desktop. Turn those two on, okay? Then down here, turn off, ask for your confirmation, but turn on, require the user to enter a password, and make sure you set a password there. Why do I want you to turn off, ask for a confirmation? Because if you're away from your desktop computer trying to log in, obviously you're not going to be at your desktop to be able to confirm that, yes, it's okay for this person to connect. So instead, set a, set a good password, set a nice solid password in there, and uh, by setting that password, then next time you or anyone tries to connect to your computer through VNC, they're going to have to enter that password in order to get access. So once you've got that installed, I'm not sure if you're familiar with VNC, but uh, I'm going to give you a few pointers. If you're on Windows and you want to connect into your Linux box, go to tightvnc.org. TypeVNC is a freely downloadable application that allows you to connect into your computer now from Windows or any platform. If, however, you want to connect from another Linux box, just go into uh, Synaptic Package Manager and do a search for uh, VNC Viewer, and that will be the application that you want. It'll be like X Type VNC Viewer, something along those lines. And then you would connect to your IP address. So I have to assume that you know how to set up your router and open the ports. It's fairly simple, but email me if you uh, don't know how to do that live at category5.tv and we'll approach that in a future episode. Uh, but basically you need to be able to get to your computer from the internet now. So having an IP address, if you have a dynamic IP address, uh, you may run into trouble because your IP address changes every time you restart your router. So check out uh, noip.com, uh, I believe is the service that I would use, or there's a couple of different ones out there. What that does, no-ip.com, this will allow you to change your, uh, to use a dynamic IP address. What's the one that I use here? Just to give you a few ideas. Changeip.com. There's the address there. That's the one that I use uh, myself. And that, what that does is it allows it so that if your IP address changes, it will automatically update. So you get like a, a faux website address specifically for your IP address. If any of that doesn't make sense, please email me. But uh, with a couple of Google queries, all the terms that I've used so far would actually bring you up results that are relevant to what you want to do. But essentially, that's the main thing to setting this up, is setting up that remote desktop and then setting it up like I've shown you here. But then you need to be able to access that through the web. All right. Mm -hmm. Default port is 5900 when you're setting up your router. If you need to open that up for virtual servers, other than that, you're good to go. Awesome. I didn't know you could do that. I know you can yeah. uh, check your telephone messages from another oh, okay. line, but I didn't know that you could do that. That's yeah, like awesome. for example, um, like I have our desktop on the system that runs our backstage pass. So see how I'm in Windows XP now all of a sudden, or, or, right? Oh, yeah. So this is actually our backstage pass computer, which is sitting back here. Right. So that just gives us quick access, right? So that's that's another uh, method as well. Our desktop, VNC viewer, things like that. But our desktop is the Windows basically version. So. Okay. Yeah. 